so good morning everyone and welcome back to the class on uh, tribology hope my voice is audible now yes ma'am it's audible ma'am yeah yeah so in the previous class we saw some numericals related to plane slider bearing so after completion of module 4 we started with bearing materials so i just gave you an overview of the outline of our module 5 which has two sections of bearing material and surface engineering so then we went on on regular classification of bearings and which are in common used bearing materials right so the most commonly used one is the babbit apart from that we have the other type of bearing materials which are selected based on the required application so in the previous class we dealt about the first uh, lead or tin based alloys so in comparison you studied the chemical composition of both the type of alloys only the drawback in lead based is it is toxic right so that it is hazardous to human as well as to the environment apart from that it has a good properties which is more feasible to use in in bearing material so we dealt about the comparison between the lead based and the tin based alloys also and what are in common the properties of both the alloys this also we dealt about and also we figured out the solidus temperature means the melting point of tin based alloys approximately and the lead based so that you can set the temperature for working below the solidus temperature so we dealt about the first classification of bearing material in the examination they can ask you to classify the type of bearing material explain its properties right or write a note on and how you compare this with the required essential features anything could be asked or else any related bearing material case study also with an example could be asked so you should be able to explain beautifully if you know the concepts so kindly listen and understand the steps so today we are supposed to start up with cad cadmium based alloys so the name itself suggests that it is an cadmium based alloy means the more percentage of the alloy will be of purely cadmium so in that aspect in this type of cadmium based alloys 97 percentage of the alloy element is purely cadmium only 2% of it is have the combination of nickel right so apart from that 97 plus 2 how it counts for 99 so remaining 1 percentage right is anything what you add as an dopant okay so this dopant could be the mentioned elements here right so it could be ag ya cu ya zn right so you can have a combination of either copper ya zinc ya ag element which is available in the periodic table so since you are using many materials together many alloy elements it is called as cadmium based alloys you are mentioning major element name over here because it has 97 percentage of the combination of the element in this particular alloy so next feature what you have to understand about this is these bearing alloys with the combination of the above said have a structure which has a nature of soft matrix okay so the matrix the if you go to the crystal structure of this cadmium based alloys so then the matrix element of this crystal structure is termed to be as a soft matrix okay so this soft matrix will be containing intermetallic compounds because you are having the combination of alloys based on the metals and hence if you go dig into the soft matrix of the microstructure of this bearing alloys you can have the observation of intermetallic compounds okay so this intermetallic compounds are of harder crystals so crystals when you speak about the lattice crystal structure it could be of soft crystals or it could be harder crystals even though the matrix of this bearing alloy is of soft matrix it will be containing the hard crystals of the intermetallic compounds since it is made up of metallic elements obviously it will have intermetallic compounds 
and bonding nature but only the thing you have to check about the crystal structure whether it is of soft or harder one so it is harder crystals of intermetallic compounds what you see basically but even though it has a very good property these alloys are not popularly used why it will be having some drawback it doesn't have a a oh, major drawback only thing is the cost price of cadmium is comparatively higher so due to the high cost even though it has better properties it is not used on a larger scale okay but even though it is expensive these alloys possess a great compressive strength so the compressive strength of this material is comparatively higher than that of our tin bearing alloys i told you tin bearing alloy is very good in comparison to lead based one in all aspect but still this cadmium based alloys have a better compressive strength when we compare with that of tin bearing alloys so it has a vital plus points but still people think it's take a step back because of the high price but if you have a good funding and project and good supporting from the organization related to the financial one you can always go with cadmium based alloys than that of the lead ya yeah, tin based alloys so this is one of the important feature what you have to justify while explaining okay so these are the good physical properties of an cadmium based alloy so apart from that how well it is suitable for an bearing material so that you have to check over so if you go on with cadmium cadmium based alloys comparatively the friction which comes into picture across the contact area will be lesser so if the frictional force will be lesser obviously the coefficient of friction will be also very less based on the material i told you when you go for revising any material it depends upon how good material you are selecting if both the materials what you are using for bearing is of an harder one so when it come across the contact area across the relative motion obviously it has good strength and hence the friction will not come easily as a result the coefficient of friction will be lower the same case in case of cadmium based alloys also secondly it has a very high fatigue strength it does not scrap out due to fatigue for even a smaller value it has a high fatigue strength that is the second important feature of it and third one if you go in making the bearings using cadmium based alloys the amount of load carrying capacity will be comparatively higher when you compare with that of tin based alloy bearings okay so this is also a very good feature of cadmium based alloys as uh, since the friction itself is comparatively lower and coefficient of friction which comes will be lower by default even the wear content will be very less okay so also the resistance to the seizure across the surface in the contact area it has a good aspect of it and it is not too much sensitive related to the dirt or contamination which is coming across the surface so it has a fair ability to embed any dirt which creep into the contact area when the bearing has an relative motion either sliding or rolling whichever the relative motion which is coming across the contact area okay so but one drawback is it has poor corrosion resistance it is not a good material that it can withstand the effect of corrosion from the external environment it is not a very good resistive material for corrosion right so this thing comes into picture if you are using an ordinary grade of the lubricant if you are selecting a best optimized lubricant grade so then you can overcome this poor corrosion resistance such that it will be acting as a good strength material along with good material to show corrosion to show resistance for the corrosion so this one important feature mainly depends upon the lubricant what you are using so due to this amount of good features so many people have tried cadmium based alloys in automobile and aircraft industries and they have yielded up with good results also and many people have figured out a novel cadmium based alloys with different uh, 
dopants of variants which come across in this one percentage so that it still it can be improved with its properties and it has a very negligible amount of drawback only thing is the corrosion resistance which is poor but even that could be overcome and hence it has a good application in the sounding streams of today's hot uh, application areas like automobile and aircraft industries so it claims to be as an more sensible and feasible economical as well as the best material for bearing provided if you have a good funding if the organization is not stable enough so then the cost factor will be an drawback basically so if you are over able to invest then this is the most better material in comparison to the others hope any doubts related to these material properties and significance any doubts hello are you people there hello kindly do reply guys are you able to understand yes ma'am yeah kindly reply where you people will be so this is about cadmium based alloys and later the next classification is aluminium based alloys so in this always just understand the name which figures out first in the classification of the material when it comes to alloys it has the highest composition of that particular element or the alloy so here in case of aluminium based alloy if we go for chemical composition it has 91.5 percentage of the composition purely of aluminium okay so the remaining composition or tin is of 6 percent copper is of 1 percent and nickel is of 1 percent so this holds out to final 100 percent composition of aluminium based alloys okay so this is the chemical composition of aluminium based alloys so apart from that what you have to understand is a small amount of silicon is usually used in this aluminium based alloys okay so if you go for a microstructure of it basically so you can figure out the nickel aluminium and copper aluminium and oxides combination matrix okay so this will be available in the microstructure if you are making an aluminium solid solution so this is not in a solution form so this is just the chemical composition if you want to convert that into solution you need to add a combination of ni and al so you have nickel and aluminium here and again you have copper and aluminium so the combination of these two makes together will provide us a soft matrix here also but it will be in the solution form so this is the state wherein you can use in both solid and in solid solution form so it has the category of two way using of the material so now you have to check out what are its properties right so these alloys basically show an excellent corrosion resistance that was not the case in case of our previous one which is the previous uh, alloy it was cadmium based alloy here it had a poor corrosion resistance so wherein when it comes for uh, aluminium based alloy it has excellent corrosion resistance right even though you use any grade of the lubricant it will show you excellent corrosion resistance that is the feature of the material and later it has fair comfortability to the journal so whenever you speak about the bearing you will be having the journal bearing right so together so it will be having a fairly good comfortability with respect to the journal what you are using and thirdly good ability to embed dirt so this property is same as that of your cadmium even cadmium had a good Uh, it had a fair ability to embed dirt wherein it is still better okay if you go for aluminium it has a good ability to embed the dirt features so it will not show any sudden changes due to the presence of dirt across the contact areas 
so similar to cadmium based alloys it has good seizure resistance okay so this is one of the good feature as we observed in cadmium based alloy also apart from that one important aspect of aluminium based alloys is it has a very good thermal conductivity so you can use for high temperature applications as well so one more important feature here is it has high coefficient of expansion so when you comes with respect to the thermal conductivity they could be like compression and the expansion with respect to the load which is coming into picture so it has a good feature of high coefficient of expansion and good thermal conductivity also so these two are the extra features which were not available either in cadmium based alloy or in lead based yet tin based alloy so you should be able to classify the material see the properties and figure out which are the different properties which are available and which are the common properties which are available so based on that you can tackle and select the material which is been needed for designing a new bearing as per the required material selection so you should be very keen in selecting the material basically so this is about our aluminium based alloys so after this the next one is of copper based alloy since the name itself suggests if it is copper based alloy it has the highest combination of copper alloy so here in this based alloy system you can see that the copper alloy is of the percentage around 80 to 85 so the alloy combination of copper will be in the range of 80 to 85 then you have tin so which has a combination of uh, 10 to 15 percentage and you have a lead uh, element here across 10 percent so this is the overall chemical composition in case of copper based alloys okay so now what you have to understand here is the term bronze covers a large number of copper alloys what do you mean by it the term even though it is a copper based alloy we can claim that it it could be reasonable related to bronze because when you speak about bronze it have a umbrella which have a coverage for many copper alloys okay but it will vary across the percentage it is not necessary that it will be like 10 to 15% and lead of 10% only because when we speak about bronze even zinc comes into picture along with the tin and lead so there you have to play with the percentage of chemical for composition so at that time uh, you can tell it as like an bronze based alloys also right why because this bronze is the word which is the very oldest material which has been used for bearing from many long period of time it has equivalent thing related to the copper whether it is copper or bronze both have a good compatibility with respect to these elements which are mentioned in the periodic table so it is tin zinc and lead only the percentage get varied but the properties remains the same if instead of copper bronze bronze can stand a have a better position because this is known from many decades before for bearing material right so if you go on with bronze you can work easily and you can synthesize and you can develop this bearing device apart from that it has a very good corrosion resistance as in case of our aluminium based alloys also and it is comparatively and reasonably hard suppose if the requirement for the bearing is you need a bearing which can withstand a heavy load and overcome uh, like high uh, frictional forces coefficient of friction right so then you should be basically having a basically you might need a very hard material so if you want to go for the bearings with the harder material so one of the option is you can go with bronze based alloys also but still the elements what you need in a alloy system is of the same range zinc tin and lead only thing you need to vary the percentage of combination as per the requirement and as per the properties of the material which is desirable for that particular bearing 
so this is about the copper based uh, alloys so now like if we go with tin uh, sorry bronze so you can see that the combination of tin what we use will be within the range of 10 to 14% so it mainly depends upon which type of machining you are using which is the industry and which type of bearing bushes are needed okay so all those are purely as per the required specific applications okay so this is for bronze based alloys wherein if you want to go with copper based alloys only so this type of alloys are used frequently wherever you want to resist a high amount of pressures so high amount of pressures usually it has to be withstandable in some particular applications so in that case where heavy pressure has to be resisted so heavy pressure has to be resisted when it is subjected to comparatively and higher load and it should be an harder material as well so this type of alloys they say that it is suitable for more frequently in railway applications so i think this is about the copper based alloys so if we go back now we have covered i think two to three materials if we remember so one is a lead based one second is a cadmium based and third is a aluminium based and we have done with the copper based alloys also so other two is the silver based alloys and non metallic so all these what we are discussing either it is lead based your cadmium aluminium copper your silver all are metallic based bearing materials apart from that we have one other classification which is focused purely on non metallic bearing materials so that also we will now come into picture so i hope the things are clear any doubts with respect to the materials classification for bearing any doubts any doubts kindly let me know so next is silver based alloys so in silver based alloys you have to see that what is the combination of other layer what you have along with silver right so if we go on with silver based alloys you can see that how these silver bearings are produced first of all so silver bearings are produced by means of electro deposition you mean to deposit a layer of silver right on the other alloy combination so here it is claimed that it has been deposited by means of electro deposition what is the thickness of the silver layer which has been deposited so it mainly lies between 0.3 to 0.5 mm so 0.3 to 0.5 mm layer of silver is applied on the shell of the steel right so here in between the steel and the silver you will be having an intermediate layer right so this intermediate layer will be made up of either copper or nickel or combination of both so in case of silver bearing you will be having a shell which is made up of steel and in between the intermediate layer will be made up of copper and nickel so above this shell design you will be having a deposition of the silver for an layer of 0.3 to 0.5 mm okay so this is about the way how the silver based alloys are produced for bearing so in that if you want to go in be specific an amount of 0.02 to 0.03 mm is deposited on the top of the silver and an indium diffuse into the lead by heat treatment so this is once it has been done it has been solidified it has been annealed for a temperature of 180 degree celsius okay so to subject it to 180 degree celsius you should see that you have a layer deposited at the top of the bearing and the bottom of the bearing which will be of silver paste basically so that thickness could be in between 0.02 to 0.03 mm so this is nothing but the covering layer okay so the covering layer will act as an aid 
for the bearing device and also it improves the properties of the bearing when it is having a relative motion so this covering layer will also protect the bearing from the external surrounding because it will help to develop an corrosion resistance okay so these are the important features of silver based alloy one thing is the silver based alloy bearings will be having a shell made up of steel in between you will be having an intermediate layer of copper and nickel right so the deposition of the silver is done through electro deposition of the range 0.3 to 0.5 mm layer apart from that it has been coated by a covering layer so that layer varies from the range of 0.02 to 0.03 mm so this is achieved by subjecting the bearing which has been developed into the heat treatment process so this heat treatment process is done at a temperature of 180 degree celsius so this is about the features what how it has been developed so once you are clear enough you should see what are the better properties of silver based alloys so these are the highest priced alloys because silver is totally expensive and hence the cost will be comparatively higher than that of cadmium based alloys and these are employed where other materials don't produce satisfactory result it is not like you will directly go with silver based alloys for bearing no it will be comparatively very higher so when the other materials fails for a particular bearing so then only you will try to test with that of silver based alloy so that it can provide and satisfactory results these are mainly used in aircraft engines okay only for connecting rod bearings so you know that you have different type of bearings classification so for other type of bearing so other combination of elements and its alloys provide a comparatively comparatively good result so only in case of connecting rod bearings this type of silver based alloys are used that two in aircraft in engines okay so this is the only key area of application which is directly used or else if the other material gets failed then only they go up with the silver based alloy so these are about the information of the type of metallic bearing materials which are available for developing a novel bearing design and fabrication of an bearing any type of bearing okay so this was about the metallic bearing materials so one more thing what you have to understand is you have another class of bearing material which is specifically called to be as non metallic bearing uh, materials right so in non metallic bearing materials you have two type one is the teflon based another one is the nylon based so if you go with teflon based it is purely called in chemical as polytetrafluoroethylene so it is an ethylene element of polytetrahedral shape okay so teflon is an polytetrafluoroethylene so if you go up in making a bearing using this material it is found already and it has been declared by many researchers it has a coefficient of friction value very less you can see it is lesser than 0.004 and that to this value is figured out without using any lubrication so you can understand if you use a layer of lubricant then obviously it won't be having any coefficient of friction value if it have also it will be comparatively very negligible okay so this is the most important feature which is comparatively very good in comparison to other metallic bearing materials okay the second important feature is it has a very good stability across very high temperature okay so some materials will be restricted to only 180 degree celsius 200 because it will be near to its melting point so many reasons will be there but if you go with this it will have a really good stability across high temperature so this is the second important feature if you go up with teflon as a material for bearing and third is 
it is chemically inert to water and many chemicals and solvents so it has chemically inert nature where we it can easily dissolve many solvents which you are adding as an active element or an filler material right so if you think about a filler material then it could be either a glass or a graphite so if you go on with glass or in graphite with the filler material what happens is it increases the resistance to deformation so when it comes to deformation you should think about if you are using a bearing material as teflon and it has so much good uh, properties like the friction value is less the frictional force the coefficient of friction and even the, also the wear amount will be comparatively lower and it has a good stability at high temperatures and even though if you use and even though if you use this type of teflon material with respect to the filler so then it helps to overcome the resist it helps to provide resistance to deformation so that takes place if you are adding a large amount of load so if the load subjected across the bearing is higher and if you get any deformation across a contact surface so at that position if you are using the filler material either by glass or graphite so this provides an increase for the resistance across the deformation so it can hold on the deformation which can come into picture so this is about the teflon feature as an bearing material so i can say that it is comparatively better to that of the other metallic bearing materials what we have studied so apart from that we have one more class of uh, non metallic bearing material which is nylon so nylon bearings have coefficient of friction value for around 0.15 to 0.33 so this is for dry friction okay so like comparatively if you go with the lubrication part so then you might get an coefficient of friction value in the range of 0.14 to 0.18 so this is for water based lubrication and if you are going with oil based lubrication then still the coefficient of friction will be comparatively lesser why because as you change the media in between the contact surface with respect to enhancement in the viscosity even the coefficient of friction comes down so that is the difference what you are seeing here so this is about dry friction this is about water lubrication where the viscosity your viscousness will be comparatively lesser and if you go for oil lubrication the viscosity will be higher and hence the frictional value also comes down okay so these all are figured out by some researchers who have performed the test when a load is subjected around 5 to 25 newtons okay along with that you should also see that what was the relative velocity across the bearing so it was like 2.5 to 100 meter per minute so this was about the features of nylon as a non metallic bearing material so now we have studied related to all the elements all the materials which are suitable to make an bearing right so 1 to 5 was of metallic based bearing material and the last one was non metallic bearing materials so we have studied all the so one part of your uh, module 5 is over related to your bearing materials so you have studied specifically its properties with respect to different bearing materials also so apart from that in general what should be the properties of a bearing material because to select a bearing material you should be having some thumb rule ya yeah, some rules ya yeah, some basic properties which has been needed so based on these properties you will go for selection of the bearing material again selection of the bearing material depends upon the general properties and the application to which you are focusing right so with that aspect you should see that any material you select should be having a low coefficient of friction okay and you should see that you will select a material which will have hardness and wear resistance surface 
okay related to a tough core so it you have to check with respect to the core material what is the specific hardness and the wear resistance you have so this is about the second feature and third one is it should have a comparatively high compressive strength so we figured the compressive strength value for some bearing elements right materials so finally it should have a high compressive strength and it should also have a high fatigue strength and apart from that it should be having capability to bear the sudden shocks or vibrations which can come into picture accidentally so due to this accident features if the bearing gets scrapped out so then that material could not be claimed to be as an best one right so this material what you select should be able to bear the sudden shocks and vibrations so this is one more important feature what you have to understand and next is it should possess high thermal conductivity okay so i told some materials are very specific with respect to high temperature capabilities so it has high thermal conductivity and also you should see that the amount of heat dissipated should be lesser and it should not be affected to any factor of the friction which comes across between the bearing and the shaft so this thing you have to see even though it has high thermal thermal conductivity the dissipation of heat comes into picture so this dissipation of heat which comes obviously will be due to the friction across the contact area between the bearing and the rotating shaft so this it should be able to handle so these are most common in general a bearing material should have apart from that the other general properties of bearing materials are it should possess a advocate plasticity under the bearing load okay so under the bearing load it should have a good plasticity okay so you know the difference between elasticity and plasticity so elasticity is a process where it can come back to its original position you after removal of the load whereas in case of plasticity once a damage has been crossed so it cannot come back to its original position okay so this happens only when the bearing is subjected under the load and it should have a good strength at high temperatures okay it is not like at the room temperature the strength of the bearing is higher and when it goes for high temperature the strength of the bearing is drastically coming down that should not happen and also you should see the economical aspect how easily it could be fabricated right it should be having an ease to fabrication it is not like fabricating the bearing using this material is a complicated one that should not come into the mind we should select the material in such a way that getting that material should be easy and using that material fabricating the bearing also should be compatible so that you can easily fabricate and next it should possess a very good resistance to corrosion irrespective of any class of bearing material you select okay and also the material what you select should not show excessive wear and tear okay so when the shaft is rotating or when you have any relative movement between the shaft and the bearing right so it should not result in causing an high wear value so that also you should think about and next you should see that you should check the comparativeness between the hard metal and the soft metal in bearing so which is yielding more friction and wear which is yielding less friction and wear and how if you have a combination of hard and soft material how the variation will takes place related to only soft metal if you are selecting or soft with the harder material so all these things you have to think about and lastly you have to see that you select a proper lubricant so that you can maintain and required film of lubricant between the shaft and the bearing if you do this and select the material properly based on this general list of bearing material so then the amount of wear and tear could be comparatively reduced in case of any type of bearing we are in use so as per that in your syllabus you have the advantages of bearing materials and disadvantages so that i have discussed specifically with respect to every 
class of bearing materials what are its important features what could be its drawback how it could be overcome so you can list out what are the advantages and disadvantages of all the type of bearing materials in your own words suppose if they ask you in general the advantages and disadvantages of the bearing material if they ask you with respect to different class of alloys separately so you can even explain it separately it mainly depends upon how the question will be put forward okay so also you can go through some advantages and disadvantages across different type of bearing also it might be asked or may not i have just shown an example for one type of plain bearing so if you go for an plain bearing which could be the advantage and disadvantages okay so if you go for a plain bearing it is not noise will not come into picture it is very quieter when it's operates and it is economical as the cost is low and the plain bearings does not occupy a huge space and as you can claim that it is compact and it requires less amount of space and the life of the bearing is not limited due to fatigue because it will be having a good fatigue strength so these are the plus point similarly when it goes for the disadvantages you can see that the friction across the mating surface okay results in large consumption of the power so this has to be overcome some or the other way by using an best viscosity best uh, lubricant of good viscosity okay so next it has a chance of damages which can come across due to the presence of impurities so even the selection of lubricant plays a very vital role we use some active elements to make that lubricant active enough right so by adding additives so when you add on the additives you should see that it is not been a case wherein you have added some impurities to it so if in case of a plain bearing if impurities come across in any lubrication system so then it can damage the entire bearing so this is one of the drawback okay so this is the one major drawback and lastly it has a more stringent lubrication requirements means it should be very specific in selection of the lubricant its grade even though slightly change of selection of lubricant can cause a damage to the plain bearings so this is just an example for you to show how you can show the advantages and disadvantages so this completes the one part of your uh, module 5 related to bearing materials its classifications advantages and disadvantages of the bearing materials okay so the next part is nothing but the surface engineering so you should see why studying of surface engineering is very much essential across the any type of bearings what we are thinking about you know that the surface is the place which comes in contact with the external environment easily so it could be corroded and even the contact area across the relative motion across the surface only results in causing the friction wear and tear so this surface layer of the material any type of material you use for bearing has to be protected and safeguarded so this can happen if you think about knowing what is the reason for surface engineering right so you have to think why surface engineering is basically needed if you don't analyze and do the surface engineering our uh, concept properly so then it can result in failure it could be a failure due to external environment related to corrosion uh, or else it could be due to the not protecting or not applying a coating so that the damages due to deformation and external loading could occur so the choice of the surface engineering is left up to you the choice of coating and surface layer on it is up to you you can see that if you want to safeguard your material with respect to thermal aspects yeah magnetic yeah optical yeah electrical surface how you protect the surface layer and how you select the coating method and how you deposit a coating layer on it so that you can protect the entire bearing surface with respect to thermal optical magnetic or any electrical properties associated with the bearing when it is in movement and also this coating layer will help to protect the surface of the coating with respect to the 
resistance of wear corrosion all these aspects and hence surface engineering study plays a very important vital role so that you have to understand very much okay so this is about the importance of why surface engineering is needed so if you come back like what is surface engineering exactly so it is just an other class of material science you have studied material science right from different classification of materials metal non metal ceramics and still many more right so you can claim that it is just a sub discipline of the material science why because it mainly deals with the surfaces of the solid so any device what we make is an solid right it is made up of a bulk material but the surface layer has to be safeguarded in such a way that it will help that product to run for a longer run and see that it is very much reliable okay so for that surface engineering analysis and coating plays a very important role so so in that aspect you can see that you can just claim the definition for surface engineering as doing a modification for the surface of any device so that the structure across the surface will be safeguarded so that could be done by improving its stability performance or durability right and hence you need a study of combination of the fields such as chemistry physics some part of mechanical engineering the metallurgy and the material science okay so this plays a vital role in protecting the layer of the surface of any device it is not like it is only for bearing okay so any device which has to be safeguarded right from the external surrounding and also to the load which has been subjected you should go at for studying surface engineering so that you can develop and sacrifice a layer which is nothing but a coating layer so that it can withstand the damages which could hamper the entire device only across the surface and overcome by showing resistance for the applied load resistance for external surrounding variations so this surface engineering holds good for both metallic type of bearing elements as well as non metallic because we have studied the metallic and non metallic type of bearing materials right so this type of surface engineering concept could be applied for both the class of materials what we have studied so in the next class we will be dealing about the different traditional methods which are there for surface coating and the advanced coating technologies right so in previous decades before this coating technologies came uh, this coating technologies are today very common due to thin films so before that our ancestors used to go with the traditional one where they safeguarded the surface of any device so they safeguarded with the help of painting electroplating galvanizing and thermal spraying and plasma spraying so then this did not have an high technical funda so it was a layman work even a normal labor could perform and protect the surface but now as the technology is improving as the fabrication of thin films micro and nano devices are coming into picture so advanced coating technologies are also been developed so these are physical vapor deposition chemical vapor deposition iron implantation iron beam assisted deposition iron beam mixing and also the laser treatment so these are the important coating technologies now it has come into picture from few decades so this could not be done by a common layman he should be a trained professional so that he know how to operate these devices and to get the coating on the surface of the device which you want to use in so all these aspects i'll be dealing it in the next class right so now any doubts related to these I didn't get any reply from you guys. I don't know whether you people are there or not. Kindly do reply me. Yes, ma'am. We understood, ma'am. Yeah. Then why you people did not reply back to me when I asked in the beginning? So now I hope everyone will write your name and USN in the chat room. I'll call the list of the students who are there in the. 
Google Meet right now. I don't have my attendance with me. Okay, so kindly do answer. Abdul Kalik Pasha. Ma'am, present. Ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Akil Akil K V. Yes, ma'am. Alo. Yes, ma'am. Anil Kumar Vastar. Yes, ma'am. Anil Bender Mohammad. Mohammad. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am Anil. Ma yeah, yeah, yeah. Chaitanya. Present, ma'am. Danush. Ma'am, which Danush, ma'am? Danush and. Ma'am, seventeen or sixteen, ma'am. Danush, what is your full name? It has been shown here to me as Danush N. Oh yes, ma'am. Present, ma'am. Yes. Kunal Raj Kiran. Present, ma'am. Mohammad Junaid. Junaid, absent. You have logged in and no response. Shri Prasad. Yes, ma'am. Niharika. Oh, present, ma'am. Nihar. Yes, ma'am. Nirab. Yes, ma'am. Rishabh Pandey. Present, ma'am. Rohan. Present, ma'am. Roshan Yadav. Roshan. Sagar. Yes, ma'am. Sagar, ma yeah. yes, ma Sagar Jv. Sagar Jv. Shiva Krishna. Yes, ma'am. Siddharth B. Present, ma yeah. Present, ma Subramanya. Present, ma'am. Sitrina Sethi Rohan. Rohan, I think you are not there. I'll mark absent. Varun. Yeah, ma'am. Yeah. So see that. I have shared an assignment. Many of you have submitted. Those who haven't, kindly do submit. Today I'll be sharing one more assignment related to module four. So kindly see that as per the due date mentioned in the Google Classroom, you complete your module four assignment as well. So in the pre next classes, we will see that how well we can focus our uh, studies related to module five, which is now to be on surface engineering. It is a really important field which plays a vital role not only in making any designs related to mechanical and products, even in the other type of products, what you have to develop either in electronics, yeah, electrical, right? The surface coating plays a vital picture. It is an interdisciplinary one, which one has to know exactly what are its important. So kindly do attend the class and we will discuss related to all its importance in our next classes. So until then, take care, have a nice day. Be safe. I hope all of you have written your name and USN in the chat room. Anyone who have missed out? Ma'am, you didn't call out my name. Alok, I called your name. You didn't respond. You didn't, ma'am. Okay, Alok, are you there? Yes. So, have you written your name and USN in the chat room? Yes, you have written. Fine then. Everyone take care. Have a nice day. Be safe. Bye-bye.